Curtin always starting to heat back up a little bit. I mean, we only have so many spots, but the commit on Saturday night, which was awesome for 2025, the running back, Waltez Clark, got things rolling again. In, in, in all, of course, 2024 and 2025, Jamonte Waller came out, talked about his visit. He's getting the five-star nod now, the edge rusher. Six foot four, I think. I'm kidding. It's six. <laughs> Ask on three. They'll have it right. Where, what, what are your feelings? <laughs> LJ McCray, a lot of noise about him. Zay Mitzi, there's just a ton of noise about this class closing in. Jordan Seaton's getting the fifth star, right? So talk to us. What are, what are we looking at? But let me ask you. Hold on. Sorry. Chris G has this question, and it's actually a really good question. So he gave us 20 bucks and another 101. So let me ask this question. I don't feel horrible if I didn't ask it. Um, he says, we add two more top 100 recruits in the 247 composite for the 24 class. How likely does this happen on a scale of one to five, one being never happening? Two top 100 recruits, you said. Yeah. According to the 247 composite. Yes. On a scale of one to five. One being never happening. Oh, look at Connor's one being think. never going to happen, and five being like lock it it's in kind of thing. <laughs> well, you guys are well aware of my feelings on locks in the recruiting process, so it's not going to be a five. Okay, um, lock. Man, that's tough. Um, I think Florida's in a really good spot for LJ McCray following the visit. Uh, his top five is really competitive. I think Florida's in a very good spot for Zay Mincy, another top one hundred prospect. And I feel like they're kind of falling behind for Seton, but that could change after he visits for, I believe it's the Vanderbilt game. So you've got really three shots there. I'm just going to play it right down the middle and we'll say three out of I'll five. Take, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll say take it. three out of five because Guys. I think most likely is probably LJ McCray out of that group. Um, Zay Mincy is somebody that I think Florida has a good shot at as well. Um, and then I know they're not stopping – they're not going to stop recruiting Jameer Grimsley, who I think at the end of the process will be a top 100 prospect. So there's a possibility that there could be a fourth runner for that group. I like that because keep in mind, guys, Connor can't give us, you know, his all all his egg basket here, right? He's got to keep us keep us locked in, and it is recruiting. So you got to throw those two things into the mix. You find us in a three, I'll take it. It's not a one. So great question, Greg, and thank you again for the dono. So back to my original question: Where, where, where are we at? Where, what do we? I mean, you kind of answered a little bit, but where, where's, where else? Any other names that we need to, you know, keep an eye on, and and how are we feeling this this class closes? Any surprises? Yeah, I don't think there's really going to be any surprises as of right now. You're sitting at 21 commits. I think Florida probably takes somewhere in the neighborhood of 25. Um, obviously, that's going to be guys. If you can land your guys like LJ McCray, Zay Mincy, they definitely want to add another offensive tackle. If it's not Seton, it could be somebody like a, a Favor Edwin, who is kind of flying under the radar. He does have offers from Alabama and Auburn, but he's only been playing football for six months. He's at uh, Eagles Landing Christian Academy in Georgia. Um, six foot eight, two hundred ninety-five pounds, just a, a freak of an athlete primarily a basketball guy before he made the transition over to football. That's somebody that they're recruiting. Um, and then they did recently offer somebody out on the West coast. I think he was like a South San Diego state commit or something to that effect. Um, so they want to add another offensive tackle. Then if it's the right guy, they could add another running back. And if it's the right guy, they could add another wide receiver. Um, okay. But I think you're probably looking somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 prospects this class, and then obviously use whatever spots they have left uh, as far as the scholarship counters go in the portal uh, going into spring ball. Dave? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with everything that Connor said. I mean, he's the the recruiting guy, but also I do a little bit of recruiting too. So I do agree with what he had said. But uh, I I, I would feel a strong, maybe a strong four from that three. Oh, okay. How and and one last little thing about recruiting with that initial commit from twenty twenty five. I know this is super early, but we're already there. It's it's this is this is time to start recruiting for twenty twenty five. We're closing twenty twenty four. This is where you start to get momentum for 2025. How did that 2025 group of guys that visited on Saturday, What's is there any noise coming from that group, and, and how is this class starting to warm up for 2025? Any, any noise on that? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously getting your class started with a prospect like Waltez Clark is always a good thing. Um, top 150 composite for now um, out of Tampa, Tampa plant. Um, and a kid that can play a little bit of everything. Um, I'm not sure if you guys saw, but uh, Keith Niebuhr of On3 did a interview with his high school coach at Plant, said they use Waltez all over the place because they don't want to overwork him at running back. Um, so he, his running back numbers aren't going to pop like, say, someone like a Kanan Daniels does this year. Um, but Waltez Clark is going to be a fantastic running back. He can catch out of the backfield. He plays wide receiver safety, quarterback linebacker for, for plant. So he's somebody that's a, a great asset to have because he can do a little bit of everything. Um, one of their top quarterback targets, uh, Ryan Montgomery out of Finley, Ohio was on campus for the Tennessee game, said the visit was fantastic, was able to stay Sunday as well to talk with uh, coach Napier and coach O'Hara, break down some film with them. And that was, he said that was phenomenal. Really enjoyed that. Um, and then another top 20 foot 25 quarterback, uh, Antoine Hill from Houston County, Georgia, another one that was on campus, said he had a great time. And I think probably, I mean, there's a couple other names for 2025. I think the one that I'm probably keeping the closest eye on right now is linebacker Tarvis Alford. Um, he's from, he's at Vero Beach High School now. Somebody that a lot of people thought was close to committing to Florida over the summer, then picked up an offer from Ohio State, picked up a couple, a couple other offers and kind of slowed things down. Jay Bateman's done a fantastic job recruiting that young man. And then obviously seeing guys like Shamar, Scoob, uh, even Taraja Mitchell, uh, Manny Nunnery, and how they've performed at the linebacker position this year, um, I think is a really, really positive selling point uh, for somebody like Alford. I think that's a great takeaway, and I'm excited to see how this 2025 uh, class breaks out again. I think this weekend was huge. And something I, I've, I've kind of knocked nailed on the head, too, with that 2024 class – Again, last year we were in this boat. We were trying to close guys, and we and I keep going back on this, but I'm trying to just reiterate to people how important and what has changed, and how much of the the changes, how how impactful it is. Having all that 2024 classes there, this is the third time now that they've all been together after being committed, building that bond, building that relationship, being in that environment at the same time. What that does for one for that class to make sure that it is a lock, as we were, you know, would like to say, and what it's going to do for 2025. You now have an entire mass of young men, you know, basically a, a group recruiting for you. When last year, that wasn't the case at all. I mean, you had maybe two or three guys in that 2024 class kind of trying to figure things out and maybe poke here and there. Uh, but now it's become a cohesive unit, which just, again, the reason to keep trusting the process, believe in it, and allow this thing to work. It's got to be exciting. Yeah, and I think Billy and his staff have the right idea with as far as recruiting goes. You want to get the vast majority of that class locked in before the season even starts. One, so they can see the product on the field that they're going to be a part of. But two, because if you've got all these guys locked in before fall starts, you can really just focus on locking down the season. And then once you get, start nitpicking or not nitpicking, but cherry picking, those few guys left that you need to close the class out with, like we said, like a Jordan Seaton. LJ McCray, Xavier Mincy, you can really focus all of your attention and throw all 21 of the guys that are committed to at them as well. Obviously, you yep. saw DJ Lagway over here tweeting uh, Jordan Seaton, hey, man, what's it going to take to get you to Florida? Um, stuff like that. You, you've got Jamonte Waller tweeting LJ McCray, come on, dog, come to the swamp. It's, it's, it's a lot easier as a coach when you have guys in your class that everybody respects. And I think we've kind of talked about those gravity guys um, on the podcast before. DJ's one of those guys. Miles Graham's one of those guys. Jamonte Waller's one of those guys. Where other players want to play with a prospect like that because they are the top guys in the country. So having guys like that already committed to kind of round out the back end of your class is is huge. Yeah, and and, and, and and what about Napier? You know, recruiting after the game. Like there was pictures taken of him at like midnight of him recruiting kids after the game. I mean, Dan Mullen would have been planning his next vacation. He was way. He, he would have been three Bud Light limes deep already. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but 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 yeah, no. Bud Napier it, Napier's a tire and he's a tireless worker on a recruiting trail, man. Um, obviously, you can you saw that from 
yeah, we just had a huge win. Game ended at 1030. I did my post-game press conference. As soon as I did that, I walked back out to the field, talked to these recruits, and I'm on out over there trying to get the next next great player to commit to Florida. So it's yeah, uh, Nick- it's a it's a never ending game, but Napier. And then, and then what DJ Pickett even uh, tweeted out that he said, yeah, I've, I, it was like something like I made up my mind or something like that. And then he just deleted the tweet. DJ Pickett said, I, I I've seen all I needed to see. And then shortly yeah. after deleted that tweet. Um, yeah. So uh, that, that sounded encouraging for Florida, for Florida fans, number one safety in the country for the 2025 class, top 10 player in the country and just an absolute stud on the defensive end, that is another one of those gravity type players where if you can get somebody like that to join the class early, like you got DJ to do last year, he helps you recruit and he kind of recruits itself.